Hello, it's me, David. Hey, we're back. We're gonna do some underwater swimming. <laughs> so, hey guys, um, boy, this is fun. This is a super lot of fun. And today we're gonna be doing an underwater painting, but more importantly, I'm really, really, really wanna get across to you about designing. And um, it's, I, a lot of people are getting it. And thank you for all those of you that um, sent me the photos for me to work on <laughs> and so I've got some work to do. I'm going to be doing that um, job to show you how to take your photographs and make them well designed and so that you can go ahead and paint them. Today's beer again comes from Katrina. Thanks again Katrina. I think we have about like I said we have about a two months worth of Katrina beer that when I was in Wisconsin she took two of my classes and she kept on giving me beers to try. This one of course is the Lyman Kugel. Um, this is Oh, definitely a Wisconsin beer from Chippewa Falls, which we pass by once in a while. But um, this is called the Grapefruit Shanty. And I've never had, I've had the other one of Landing Kugels, but never this one. Grapefruit, we're going to see. But I do like grapefruit, so maybe, maybe this will be good. <laughs> so cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's just something you need when a really hot day. It's just a really good... And you know me, I like the sweet beers. Okay, so here's to um, <laughs> good. Thank you, Katrina. Um, this I'll, I'll give this about a ten. I really it, this is really good for this is my warm studio. A ten beer. Um, <laughs> you could drink a lot of those on a hot summer day on a beach. Hello, Susan, Don, Pamela, Marion, and um, thank you to the person who um, already gave me a thumbs up before I even started. <laughs> so that's pretty good if I'm doing pretty good and I get a thumbs up before you even start. It's like, wow. <laughs> All right, let me just show you a few things. Let's get going here on my website. I'm trying to, um, the company still that I'm using for this broadcasting doesn't let me put my actual website in there. And so I would uh, remind you and uh, how to get there and stuff. And I would take you through it sometimes, but this is just a picture of the website. But my website, of course, is um, beckerart.net or my name, davidrbecker.com. Either one will get you there. And that's where you pick up all the things and you tell you all your friends to go there. And then tell them to go over to YouTube and subscribe to my channel. And that'd be all great. So we're going to do our supplies. Supplies this today, we're doing our Holbein watercolors, our brushes. And um, I'm not using masking fluid today, but I am going to be using some soft tape um, to cut out the shapes. of so Instead of using masking fluid. Something I'm going to show you how to do if you have paper that rips. All right, and also I just want to put um, show you that this week I put together a page on my website where all the items I recommend that you have had um, seen are in my newsletter. And um, everybody always asks me, where can I get that? Where can I get this? And so it's in my shop. If you look at the where it says shop in the top part of my um, website, where it says shop, just go there and go then kind of scroll down and you'll see recommended items here. And these are all the items I recommend and where to get all the things that I always talk about, like the new liner thing I had just sewn, the everlasting pencil, and all that is on this website at um, beckerart.net or my davidartbecker.com. Go there and go to the shop button and find all the things that I use. And um, some of them take you to like Dick Blicks, wherever I can find it cheapest, um, like the eleven or the um, paint, the whole bind paints. Uh, Jerry's Arama seemed to be the cheapest right there. So I give you links that go right to the place. All right. And so let's get going with our value study. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> look at what I did. I turned the painting black and white. And doesn't this look like yin yang almost? Like we got the white, which is the light blue. See the light blue? So that's the middle tone, right? It's not white of the paper. And I, I never talk about making it, you know, the middle tones have to be distributed to either the white or the black and I did show you that this is a middle tone right here and if I would have washed this out this all this top here would be in the light area so this is all light this is middle tones also in the light but then we have our darks down here and look at we have like in the yin yang thing remember we have the a lot of dark area with a little white dot and then here we have the black dot um, with a lot of white so it's just making simplifying your subject matter and this one, even though all the colors and all that will still be the same, and you'll have the middle tones, but you just need to see what the design element it does, is of the painting. of your. So it makes it easier for you to paint. So you can go in there, get your lights done, get your darks done. And again, middle tones, when you first design your painting, 
assign them a black or white and that way we'll make it look differently which i didn't do here quite um this medium tone right here should be all white that would really be white that's that's probably the light area um because that's right in here if you look that's a middle tone it's more towards the dark and you gotta also make it dark it, it could be in the dark and it would still be a fine composition but i like having this a little bit lighter so that the the man or the woman here who is the diver the diver would um pop forward and so making this a light makes that diver pop forward and as they go down the middle tone and go to the dark here then you get the the turtle which is light against the dark so this is dark against the light this is light against the dark it's just juxtaposition the lights and darks and getting your big one all this little stuff over here all the underwater coral and stuff is gonna be really colorful here in the picture it is very colorful um, but I'm going to make it more colorful than I have it. As long as I keep it, that's part of my light. That's spattered light. That's the kind of light, and it's um, a little bit of both, black, black and white, but I can just spatter it like that, and it'll look kind of neat because it is the foreground, and it'll bring it forward, and it can be, you can put salt there if you need that texture. So texture and all that stuff about composition doesn't really play into effect right now when I'm trying to design the black and white of the image. And um, it's very interesting, the photos that you sent me, because some of them I'll explain. And so w watch for that next video. I think I'm going to use it for next video um, for next week's newsletter. But it's really important to show you how important it is to make that, that design element for you first and foremost. All right. And so we'll go from there. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can go here. Uh, where are we going? We are going to our tabletop. <laughs> So this is a really good beer. This is very tasty and it's very warm in here again. And it's not that it's not like grapefruit where it's really, you know, tangy tangy like a grapefruit in the morning, but it's good. It's actually got a nice nice taste to it. All right, and so look at all you people are here. Thank you for coming by. And please always ha have your friends um, have your friends um, subscribe. And it's a free um, way, and I keep on telling people, you know, you can learn um, from my workshops and that, or you know, live, and also here from this place right here, every Thursday and sometimes Sunday. This last Sunday was kind of fun, but I um, my camera had a broken lens, so it was a little bit not great. But actually, I um, I have insurance on that camera, and this is like the fourth one now. This is the fourth um, phone I got off of that. And so get insurance when you get a phone, a good phone. It really does work. I've gotten four. All right, so here's what I did this afternoon. And um, I like it. Didn't quite get dark enough down here. I, I want to get a little bit more washy and a little bit more in the contrast because the contrast would be better if I had this a little bit, excuse me, a little bit darker. But that doesn't mean that this has to be black or really the, even that dark as this. As long as this area, the dark area, is darker than the light area and the light area is darker than the um, light area see it's just it doesn't matter how dark you make it when you have the design element just that you need to let's say this dark was like 20 percent lighter than this then you'd make sure that that is how dark your light is going and you wouldn't put anything in the light area that was as dark as that dark and so it's you can balance this. A couple of people in class didn't make it black or didn't make it this dark, and it still looked fine because they made their value of dark a certain level, and then the light was never touching to that dark, and the, and the dark was never touching to the light area. It was not the same. So you keep those separate. I see you on your YouTube on my computer, but not on the TV. Hmm. I'm not sure how that works. Then. Well, if you go to YouTube on TV, then you have to find um, you have to find my subscribe to my channel. Maybe um, go to that that particular thing because it should be the same on the TV. I'm not sure. I'm not sure with the Roku and everything like that, but um, it should look for look for this link and then go to your TV and put down that link. All right, so let's get going here. And so what we're gonna do? Oh, I also, also I want to tell you I use soft tape. This is soft tape. It's a, um, they're a little bit smaller rolls, but they're very thin tape and it's not really super sticky. I didn't put it on the outside here, but I use it for my, my parts that are going to be light, like the, the turtle and the back of the flippers. I did that so I can do the big washes, which I couldn't do this afternoon because I didn't, I didn't use masking fluid 
or um, I use this instead of masking fluid because I can heat this and it comes off this paper without ruining my paper because this paper is a little bit soft, the Stonehenge Aqua. It's a little bit softer than Arches, so it does tend to tend to rip when you use masking fluid. So instead I use tape, the soft tape. You can get that. Oh, I got to put that on my way. I got to put it on the recommended. I'll, I'll put that on tomorrow, the recommended. Um, it's like, it's not on there yet. I have to, it, I'm still building all the things that I use, but I, I just don't remember everything that I, I've talked about. But that's going to go on there. That'll go on there tomorrow. So let's, let's wet the whole surface because I want to have this um, underwater. And I'm going to, if you look in the picture right here, there's not much light in this area. I want to make it more like this where there's light shining through. And this actually got a little bit too light here, but um, we're going to try to do a little bit better job on that. I did that on 140 and everything was really wet and um, I applied it to the paper really, really super wet. So we're going to try something a little bit different. And I'm going to wet it as I go along here and I'm just going to bring it down. And first thing I'm going to do is just get some of these. I probably could even do that hard edged, but um, I'm just going to take this light blue, horizon blue, maybe a little bit. Turquoise blue would be really good for this. I should really get turquoise in my palette. <laughs> this would be a good color. Maybe a little bit of white to make it thicker so that it doesn't spread because I just wet it. And I'm just going to do these little hatch marks with my flat brush. And it'll indicate waves, right? And I'm just going to put it right in this area. And anything away from that, I'm going to start getting darker and darker. I have composed blue inside the um, light blue, the horizon blue. So I feel a bit darker. I'm going to go right over this guy here because he's dark, right? He's the dark and the light, so that's cool. Um, Karen, yes, it is. Uh, it's called the um, Transom um, palette for the gouache. It's in there. I already put that in there into the um, shop. You just go to my website. It's right in there. So here we're going to go a little bit darker. It's a smart idea. Somebody told me, it's like, why don't you put that page together? That way um, we can just, you can just tell, I can, you can, I can just tell you to go there to find the items, which is, um, it's already worked. It's already helped already because a couple of people have asked me a few things. And I said, oh, just go to that part of my website and everything's there. And the stuff that you buy on, on Amazon, I get a little cut from, so that's good. The parts like for... Um, when you go to Dick Blick's or Jerry's, if I got it to those places, that I don't get a cut out of that, off of that. But it's still a place to go get them, and you can just get them there. So see how I'm just kind of making the little waves here and back and forth and pretend like the guy hasn't swim into the, into the scene yet. I'm just going to make it darker this time. And I like to use a little bit of ultramarine as I'm getting darker. I like the ultramarine look in the book. Now, I, I think it would be nice to have a turquoise that's always... A little bit of yellow but I can maybe just add a little bit of yellow to my light blue and that'll kind of turn it a little bit more turquoise because that turquoise has a little green you know in the blue turns a little green that's fine it's gonna make it darker now remember try to make it 20% darker than you think because it's gonna dry 20% lighter so make it darker make it look wrong to make it look right and now right here it ends up being a little bit lighter there too so let's go back to our light area and I'm going to sit there and wet this area a little bit here. Make that a little bit lighter. And I just noticed, I just noticed when I was drawing this up, that there is another diver right here in the picture. There's another diver coming this way. You can put him in. I didn't draw him in. I may put him in there, though. But, um, yeah, there's another diver with his mask looking at us right there. And it could be actually a little bit darker. And that could be kind of cool, too. I just didn't see him at first because... I was working from my um, thing. I it was it was blurred out, and so I didn't see that. But I just noticed that as I was drawing it on this afternoon, or this evening, I should say, when I was drawing it on this, this evening. So here, make this nice and light. And there's a nice light. I like this light right here. It really combines well with the background and this dark rock over here. So let's make that looking really nice. Again, waves. This is just waves. I like to do a circular motion, like it's like around. Um, it kind of looks that way underwater. It kind of seems that way when I see pictures. It's like the sun is kind of... I'm not going to put the rays in there, which happens a lot too, but I'm not going to put those in there. If you want to try it, go ahead. You can try putting rays in there too. 
Please ask questions for anybody that's new. We got quite a few of you here today, and thank you so much for dropping by. All right, now let's take we'll wet this a little bit farther now because that's my lightest light. And um, well, actually, let's just wait this. Let this be wet. But let's go get our colorful coral. And I know in the picture is not very colorful. And if you want to just keep it to those colors, that's great. I'm going to make this warmer, like it's like you can see it more. Um, I made it a little bit too warm, but um, let's see. We're just going to go in here, get some soft edges. And this is my still my light, still my light area. I'm using a lot of orange in here because orange and blue are complements. So that really works out well. I do like putting a little pink in here. Let's see a little pink and maybe a little opera to make a... A salmon color. I like that salmon-y color. A little bit of pink. This is my this is my shell pink, and with a little bit of orange, makes it look kind of a salmon-y color. And I wish I would actually be a diver and see some of that coral. I have gone snorkeling before, and I've seen some beautiful colors, but I forget what colors there are down there. But you can you know do whatever you want with color because we know now that if you follow your value pattern. Um, the large, large lights and darks, you're going to do fine no matter what. No matter what color you put in there, it's going to look great if you follow your values. Okay, a little bit of yellow. And I don't have to put the blue over this right now. I can do that later if I feel I want it to be more blue. I just want to go in there now and get some of my, my large areas of light. And I'll go back in with the, with the big wash of dark. Like, I'm not going to do the darks right now. I want to wait a little bit for that. And I'm still going to do this. And actually, while this is starting to dry a little bit, I want to still have this wet. And so I want to put this little bit of the wall that's in front of him. Soft edge. So that's wet. And so I'll just go in here, put that in there with a thick amount of paint. Go right over him or her. Maybe you can't tell when they have the wetsuit on like that. And that's where the one other guy is there. I'm just going to make it a thing. I'm not going to worry about that, that being a person over there. But... You can put them in if you like. It'd be kind of neat to put that in there. And let's make this a little bit more turquoise too. A bit darker blue here. Let's get that going darker right away. And by making this darker over here, I can make the negative painting. And I don't have to worry about the... the I used the tape there, so I don't have to worry about the turtle or the the fins. Hey Maria, hey Karen. Hey Darcy, Lynn, Tina. Again, thanks guys for sending those photos in for to be, um, I'm going to work on them this week, this weekend also. And we're just going to put together a really cool video and showing you how I'm going to take those images and show you what I would do with them and or maybe not do, the, do them at all. Um, a few of you had sent me some stuff. I would maybe have to change a lot of things, or I'll show you how I use AI also <laughs> and sometimes make things different from what you see in the actual photo. So see how this is soft edge now, and I can make that look like it's going back. And as I go down, I get darker and darker now that I'm getting to my dark area. And again, it depends on how dark you want to go. You don't have to go to black like it is in the photograph. It's very, very dark. You don't have to go that dark, but you can. It all depends on how dark you want to make your areas. You notice how I did not wet this area first? I'm just going to wet it as I go along because I want to get over here and do these hard edges on the, on the coral over here. And also I can do that same thing for the background here. I can actually make it look like there's coral back here too. It just happens to be dark coral. And I didn't do the rest of the light in there, did I? Um, I probably should have done that first. So let me wet this here along a little bit so that I can leave that alone for a little second while I get my lights over here again. Let's just let's just throw some light in there. Let's throw some fun. Especially right by the turtle here. Let's put some really fun color right there. Some really nice color and lights. And, and if you know coral or look it up and you want to draw a specific kind of coral, you know, anemones or whatever, they call it, all that stuff, you know, you put that whatever you want in there. And maybe you find a really cool side of a hill like this or a cave or something that you can, you know, 
that you can add to that instead of seeing what you have here. Maybe you don't like this one. Maybe you want a little bit more color. As long as you keep these values down here, which I will do later, I'll keep them a little bit darker. And maybe I'll throw some of this color into the turtle this time too, which I didn't do last time. All right, so there's my light. And now let's go and get our dark in here. Let's start really wiping in that dark, a lot of it. I'm moving my palette here and you guys are not seeing this here so well. Let's straighten this out. So let's get some, let's get some darks in here and let's get some fun things happening here. A little spatter, you know me and I love spatter. Uh, thanks, Lynn. Yeah, um, I, you know, it, it must be your Wi-Fi then, or if you're watching on your TV, if there's a little lag, um, then it's, you know, something that to do with your, with how much power you're using for streaming your, my, my, my video on your systems, on your TV. And it's bigger and sometimes it's i'm hoping it's um hd and also when you are watching i just i learned this um one time that if you go to your youtube let me just go real quick my youtube here and if you go and you click that star the settings um hit the settings um button and it'll it'll say um uh, quality and then the quality instead of sitting and having it auto do its own self because it go it's automatically it goes to 720p the quality so hit the quality button and then go all the way up to hd to go 1080 hd because i am in 1080 hd so it will be very very clear but if you keep it on auto the quality on your youtube um thing go to your um the little star thing the wheel the um, settings wheel and then go to quality and then instead of having auto because a lot of times it'll set the auto to a low um, but then again, if it's a high D, maybe it, it goes slower for you. So just figure out if you have enough power to show it at 1080 um, HD at high definition. Just a little um, trick I learned and I was like, oh my gosh, now it's a lot more clear. Because it came out crystal clear then when I was watching something one day. So that's something you do on your end because my end, is, I'm doing this in HD. I'm, I'm recording in HD, so it should be super fine. But if you don't have your setting at HD, you're not watching it at HD. But again, it also will maybe lag if you don't have enough power to stream it on that kind of, you know, on in HD. So watch out for that. You want to put a little bit of, um, a little bit of stuff back here behind them. Like it's maybe not quite that dark. A little bit of blue in there. And have fun with this, you know, spatter a little bit and Maybe make it look um, textury. Depends on what you want to make it look like. Now there's my dark, and that's going to be boy. I'm getting a reflection. I gotta reset up this setup <laughs> one of these days. Let me put something underneath here real quick, so you're not getting a, sh a reflection. No, I'm still getting a reflection. Get some absorbent ground over here. There, no reflection now. A little bit of an angle, but. That should be fine. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we are, we got pretty much our darks done over here and see how this tape, this soft tape, it repels. And so does Holbein's um, masking fluid, which is this. That also repels and is very light, but I tend to like to use the tape better because I think it rips less. Cheers, everybody, this is really good. <laughs> um, no problem on the 1080, 1080 tip because um, then you'll see if you start seeing your um, videos on YouTube a little bit better. It'll be all clear because most people who um, film on are using high quality um, video equipment. And, um, you know, also my audio, the audio, I think there's also something you can do with the audio too. Um, but, but I learned these things as you're going along. And so I'm glad I could bring that up. I, only, I was going to bring that up a while ago. I totally forgot. Okay, so now we got the lights. Now let's go into our light area here and just get our darks in there. And now I'm going to wet it as I go along because this is all dry now. And so parts of it, I'm going to do hard edge and parts I'm going to do soft edge. And so I'm just going to take my round brush this time, my big round brush. 
just going to go in here and make it a little bit darker than my last time this afternoon. I didn't quite make it dark enough. And I'm going to float some war um, warm colors inside the blue colors like I did over here. I'm going to let them just float inside and, and it makes it look more like it's part of the same scene. What I had done here, I felt um, when I, I did go back over it, if you see right here, I went back over and I wet everything because it was too dappled. It was too much texture. And so I went back in, but I did not darken it later. So this time I'm going to darken it and make it more colorful right away. So more colorful and darker. And my batch of paper, I have a batch of paper that always has a little line on here. You can't see it. I'm sure you can't see it, but I can see this little line, something I did to the paper. I must have ripped it out of something one day. So I'm going to make this. A little bit, um, see, I want some dry, hard edges, and then I'll go and get some soft edges and, and do it as I go along. I call this painting as you go along, wetting as you go along. Sometimes that's the best way to do hard edges and soft edges all at once. Because then you just soften it while you go along, and then while it's wet, then you go back in and plop a lot of color into the wetness. But keeping some parts dry so you can get that look of a um, nice and textury look. So I like them saying wet the surface and then just put your color in. I may even keep it a little white here. And this is dry now, so I'm not going to get soft edges unless I add water. And I can also spatter it with, um, like this, I can spatter real close up there. Get a couple little bit of um, texture. You know me and texture, I love the spatter for texture. It's one of those things I just, I, it's just, a, to me it's a great look. The texture with spattering. It's just such a watercolor thing. And there's many people who I've, last week I saw were using cellophane, you know, putting it on there. That's really cool. I had done a, um, a substitute teach for somebody in a class at the Main Street, Main Street um, Gallery here in Lake Zurich. There's a um, really great art, art um, gallery and school run by Frankie and Frankie she um, has a lot of great teachers come in and one of her weekly teachers was absent and she's asked if I could um, come in and just substitute teach while she was gone and it was kind of fun seeing whatever he's doing because they're not my students but I try to hope hopefully they'll watch me here and hopefully there's anybody here today thanks for stopping by And actually the teacher there is Cookie, um, who I used to work with in advertising. She's also a court artist, a courtroom artist, which she, she's really good. So if you're in Chicago area, if you've seen stuff on on, on like um, on the news, it's her, it's her stuff usually. And she's a very, very good artist. So see how much fun this is now? We're going to spatter, let things drip spray it maybe let it run down and then i will also put opaques in there too you know just put them opaques in there later okay, let's see go down to here now these up here i'm going to try to make it a little bit lighter and also a little bit more blue I want this area over here where the turtle is, I want it to be more warmer, but up here, I want to kind of push it again towards lighter blue. Make a little bit lighter blue up here. And it's going to be opaque because I'm going on top of a dry surface with a light blue and it's just darker underneath, but that, it's okay. It's fine. I love doing it actually. I think it looks really cool to float some pigment that's hard edge and soft edge that's lighter than dark. And then we're going to have all the fish and stuff swim in there. That'd be really nice too. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Much better. See how much better that looks with um, this time around compared to the last time because I had too light and now it's all really textury. Look at all that little spattering. Isn't that nice? Ooh, that's great. I just tap on my finger real close by so you're not getting over everything. And these ones over there, well, those, yeah, I could have just got rid of them by just putting something over that while you're spattering. So definitely, you know, watch your spattering so that when you're doing some area you don't want it, cover it up. All right, so there's my light area, my uh, dark, my medium darks and my darks. 
and we're basically at our detail darks now but this guy right here is a combination of my large darks and my middle and my um and detail darks so basically it's just darks cheers <laughs> we're getting this one on pretty quickly here <laughs> then again i'll think about it. next thing you know we're at, at we're done <laughs> or we're over at the end here so let's go a little bit quicker and so i'm gonna start out with up here what i'm gonna do and you have to kind of look when I drew him, he's got some kind of pack on his front, like he's got on his on his on his belly. He's got like a pack. I took that out because I wanted you to see his his waist basically. So I didn't draw that in there. So you draw in what you feel that looks best. And there's also this little round dot that is some kind of meter or something. There's a little round dot here. I made it so you can see his head instead of that little dot because that 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 kind of looks like it's his head. So they get this really small little head if you do, do it that way. So just watch your drawing. A drawing is number one. So if it looks doesn't look right in the picture, then change it to make it look right for you, for your painting. Always make your painting look better than what it is in the photo. Because it's not a photo, and so you have to kind of make sure that the drawing is right on in large, in large areas so that the, the viewer can understand by just looking at the big picture of the of the item, that's how come I took this little bag there. Otherwise, it looks like he has a. They have. Um, he's really big, and it doesn't look as good. If I can make it look better, then that's fine. Just do it. I know I can make it look better by drawing it nicer. And I see I put it all together and just let it. I I did use a little bit of red up there, orange to match this area. So I'm going to give them a little bit of color up there and then I'll go really dark and I will just let things float in there and just make sure you get the outer edge to look good. The outer edge is what's important, hard edge too, because it is my, it's part of my center of interest. This is not, he's not, or he, she's not, the diver is not the center of interest completely by itself. It's basically this whole area with the, with the, um, so it's like this type of thing and it works. It's fine to have a large area of center of interest. They kind of are two parts in a way. That's fine. It works. I'm just going to put the foot. Look at how fun that is. And just let things float in there. You don't need to put like the belt or all these little things inside there. That's too detailed. This is underwear. It's really dark. Just make sure you get the outer edge looking pretty decent and you're fine. You'll be fine. And like all the hoses and stuff like that, that can come for detail stage. This is still large darks and some details maybe he's got his little thing, something in his hand maybe he's got he's holding maybe a camera and then there's a little i'm gonna get the things later and then we got the fish that's small but now what i want to do is this looks like it's dry enough and i'm going to tap it with a towel let me just use this my my cloth on the table here i'm just going to rub the tape so the tape doesn't have any wetness to it because I don't want to rub it off and then there we go and then I'm gonna use my heat gun and that with the, to, to get the tape off I use my <laughs> um, stripper and that and that you should probably use a, a hair dryer and I only use this hair power because it's a lot quieter than a hair dryer and when I'm doing this video you don't like to hear that could you have used blue all the way into the coral and added color with a brush sponge? Yeah, you could do that too. Yeah, definitely. Try it too. Anytime you want to um, try stuff, I always tell my students, try things. And actually, don't do them on your painting. Take another sheet of scrap paper when you're doing this coral. Maybe you want to do it a different way and a new way. Anytime you're doing something new, try it first on a scrap sheet of paper. Like, I'm sure you have a bunch of paintings in the back end where, you know, you're never going to do something on the back of it. So just take the, even if it's a good painting. I do that with a lot of good paintings. I use the back. As long as it's 300 pounds, don't use 140. That's going to wreck that thing. But, um, yeah, so just um, use the back and try it. Try different techniques. Try different things. I'm going to try. I just, I noticed on TikTok, I was um, watching some TikToks. And um, a person was using the gel, the gel, um, what do you call that? Gel printing. And I was wondering if I could do that with like watercolor or like a thick watercolor or even like acrylic gouache or watercolor gouache. And if that would stick to the gel or, I'm, you know, so I'm just going to try. 
I don't know. I'm just going to try it. You know, so try things. It's really fun to try things, try new things. You may be the next person that does something that nobody else has ever done before. And then it's all yours. You know, so try different things. Let's see, what was I doing? Okay, I was taking, so what I do is I take a, um, uh, a pen, or an, what do you call it, exacto blade, and I, I heat this up on low. I don't put it very high. And I just let it sit there and, um, and I heat the, the glue or the tape up a little bit because that way it then it doesn't it doesn't pull paper away because it's it's kind of um, melting the gum and so see how easy that comes up comes up really easy doesn't rip any of the paper so if you're ever using a paper that's very very um, soft and you want to use like a, like here I want to um, use masking fluid but I don't want to use masking fluid so then what I would do is I take take the heat and just put it across it. Not very hot. A uh, hair dryer would do fine, but it's just too loud for me in, in the studio here. And so, because um, if I take it off this way, let's see, a lot of times it will rip a little bit. You see, it's already ripping a little bit, but if I heat it, yeah, see, it's just a little, it just rips it because it's pulling up some of it. But if I loosen the gum up, I loosen the gum up a little bit, and then it just makes it, it just comes right off without pulling any of the, see that? Look at that. I should have heated that first because it did pull up some of the paper. Yeah, see it pulled up some of the paper because I didn't heat it up first. So heat it up first and then take your, take your, take your exacto knife, pull it up a little bit. Yeah, this part, you can't tell, but it took up some of the paper. Because I started pulling before I let it warm up until it let the heat. See, this side didn't pull anything up. Oh, there's a little bit on the side there. All right, so there's my light back. I got my light back. It's still kind of loud, sorry about that. So there, you can, I mean, if you use masking fluid and the kinds of paper you're using, that's all good. And, uh, but now I can go in there and I can, it's part of my details. And so I do like this afternoon, I went around that, but look at how sharp that is now. And it's part of your center of interest. So it's good to keep it nice and sharp. So I'll go in there first, get my lights in this area because it's not gonna be white. I don't want it to be white, but I do want it to be light blue. So I'll put a little light blue over it. And this will show a little bit that it, it um, tore the paper a little bit. I'm just gonna put a little blue over that, a little light blue. See how it tore the paper right there? I didn't wait long enough to keep it warm, but still fine. The turtle came totally off. And also when you're putting on the tape, do not burnish it in. That tape um, repels so nicely that you don't have to push it down really hard and burnish it into the paper. Just lay it over it and lightly put it on there because it's going to repel. Look at how hard an edge it gave it. You don't have to burnish it down. I didn't do that at all in the turtle whatsoever. Here I must have um, put my finger on it and burnished it down a little bit. You don't need to do that at all. It repels the water so nicely, that tape. It's a great tape for watercolorists. See, a little bit darker. And that's called soft tape. And you can get it at like, well, I'll, I'll put it, like I said, I'll put it in my thing. And you can get it at like a Dick Blix, um, Jerry's Artorama. You can get it in the soft tape. It's made by Holbein. Now the turtle, I, I'm going to make a little bit of the blue in the back. But in the front, I'm going to make them a little bit warmer than I have in the photograph. The photograph is not very colorful. And then his little, little arms or fins, fins, I should say fins. I'll make those a little bit warmer, so I'll give him a little bit more warmer head. Because I know, yeah, he all this stuff is under underwater, and it, it actually is blue, but that doesn't mean it's not so clear, the, the water, that I can actually, I'm that close, that I can actually see colors. So I'm just putting a light wash over this. I'll let that dry, and I'll put the more detailed part, parts in later. Just going to put it in there. Now it's wet. I go beyond here a little bit so I get a little soft edge. Could you have used blue? Oh, yeah, what is it? Again, if you have questions, please ask. 
And if you're new and you don't feel scared to talk on the chat, go ahead and just um, let us know that you're here. We'd love to see who some of the new people and just say hello. You just can say hello. You don't have to even ask a question. We'd love to see that um, who's all here. You know, many of you don't don't ask questions or just watch, and that's fine too. You don't have to do ask if you don't want to. I need it to a little bit dark around his. Oh, I just put it into his face. Okay, well, let's leave that. Leave that go, and let's go up here now and get our fish. So the fish can be colorful, or the farther away up here, I'm going to go not too dark. I noticed that fish in the picture right here. It's really, really dark, and so I'm not. I don't want to go to quite that dark. I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter than that. Just get the general shape of that. Small brush. So you're doing small things now. Don't use a huge gigantic brush to get something that's really small like this. And then, matter of fact, it's even too big. I'm gonna use my rigger. That's even smaller. And you can also things reflect in the water too. So maybe the bottom of him is a little bit more orange. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw a little bit of orange on the bottom of this fish because maybe it is that orange fish, but it's kind of farther away, so it's getting picking up a lot of the blue from the water. Here we can just do a little, and you know the shape of a fish, it just has to be, you know, you can put a fin here and there. And they usually swim in schools, so you can put, a lot of times depending on what your picture is, somebody said that they thought that some of these um, little light areas over here were the small little baby turtles that the, um, the mom has here, and, and those are little baby turtles swimming around, which could be, you know, go ahead, put them in. Somebody had asked me um, if, if, you know, if they can still send me some of the pictures because they didn't get a chance yet to find some. Go right ahead. I may not get them in or may I may. And even if I don't get them into the video, I, a lot of times we'll still put them and do them. And maybe I'll just show another way. I'll maybe show them in the Facebook group. You know, so that it doesn't all have to be on video. Some of it could be just in um, a picture where I'll show small little things here I want to make more schools here let's get a lot of fish swimming around here this would be fun to be underneath there and just have some oil paints because you can work with oil paints right on water it would be kind of cool to just do a painting underwater that's um, with this with the scuba diving with the tanks and everything and then go down there and just do an oil painting All right, so now the shadowing. I'm going to go in here and get the shadowing. It's dry already. And this just takes time, you know, spend time on it. And look at how light this got over here now. And so um, I still think it looks okay. I may go in there and get a few more darks just to push things back a little bit, which won't hurt. It'll just, um, it'll just make things a little darker. It'll make them more the, into the dark area again because, again, you know how important I keep on saying it is to get your pattern because that, you know, once you have the pattern, it's not so much that it's the whole composition. There's a lot of things in composition that you have to worry about. It's just the general pattern of your light and dark. And I got to keep on saying that because I just, it is important, but it's not the comp, it's not like the, the composition is, it has to be part of that design, but the design is definitely the most important part. And then you can get your composition to work with colors and other things besides, you know, textures and stuff. It can all help the composition, depending. But first and foremost, you got to get your design elements and your light and dark pattern to be a good pattern. Then you can do all kinds of stuff with composition. So there he's got a bunch of little hoses and I'm not sure what he's doing. Actually, this um, maybe if you're a scuba diver, you know what the person's carrying or whatever they're doing. I will put a little bit of a line there to show like where the where the um, tank is away from his he's probably got I got a strap here and probably got a belt of some kind on and see I'm using my small brush now because 
When you do details, grab out your small brush. Don't be using your big, huge brush unless your style is very, very loose and where you don't want to have this kind of super, super detailed effect and you want to use a bigger brush, then yeah, that's, it's all about your style then. Put a little bit warmer for his face here. His eye. Looks like. And for this also, like I, I not, I don't have a big picture in front of me of a turtle, but if you're doing this in your in your own studio, you can actually put like a big turtle on the screen, and then look at it, look at see, make sure that you get it to look just like that, like the markings on the turtle. You can do that, draw it in there first. I should have done that a little bit more detail so I can see. Though I, I've done enough turtles to know kind of how it is. A little bit shadowing there. Shadow underneath here. Is there an archival white pen? Um, some people use those gel pens. You know, they have those gel pens. They're white gel pens. You can use those. They're archival. Um, at an art store, look for gel pen, like a gel pen. And I've, I've seen people use those for signing their name in white on the dark part. So let's go in here now with my large brush again and get some darks in here to pop this little guy out a little bit. And also you can use white paint. Now, I remember our, our new writer, which I don't have with me, our fine line painting pen that you can find on my, on my products page. And that thing is wonderful for signing your names now. Um, that pen is the best thing for lines. It, really, I, I just can't believe that they have found, it took me that long to find something like that. Um, the fine line painting pen, I showed them a couple weeks ago. Um, use that, that is just amazing. Put white paint in there. Make it thin and then just use that. It's just super. I don't have it with me right now. Otherwise, I'd show you it. Let me see if I have my other one here or not. I don't think I have it here. Nope, I don't have it here at the moment. But I'll have to show it again. It's just amazing. Best thing to use for um, sign, for signing and just doing lines in general. Here I'm making this nice and dark, wetting as I go along, but there's hard edged, it's hard edged, and then I put water to it. I just need to have it darker. I just want some things darker here so it separates the the um, like the the turtle here from the background, from the foreground. And also the coral right here, gonna make it a little bit darker. And once it's wet, then you can put other colors in there. Like right now I can just put other colors in there too to make it look like coral. And then it's just soft again. It's wet in the wet. It's like a brand new wash. It's just darker. There's nothing wrong with going into a second time, into even a third time, as long as you make sure it's darker and you do it while it's wet and you float your pigment in there. That's the, the important parts of that statement I just made is that you re-wet and then make sure it's floating, like re-wet the whole area here. Like I just, I have to re-wet it and then make sure you use enough paint that it's floating on the surface. And it's covering up what you wanted to cover up and make darker. Now there's a hard edge here because it didn't wet that. And you can also make it something. I could like I could make it like it's like a foliage, or not foliage down there, but it could be like seaweed or whatever. And then um, that's dark. And I think lastly, I will go in. I wonder if he should be a little bit darker underneath him too. Let's take some darks through here. Just make him come forward a little bit. Now you have to watch it this time because I don't have masking fluid. So I just gotta make sure that I don't go crazy with going into that area. It could be another little part of the, of the coral, the coral reef. 
maybe some fish in here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with some light opaque colors. Um, I totally love doing it. I, I know it's a really not traditional way of painting watercolor is to go in with opaques, but I have really found to love it. I actually like, like on him, he could, he's in the water, so there can be some shininess to him. So a great way of doing that is just plopping some opaque colors on top. I think it's just using all that gouache. I really am enjoying that a lot. And so, and you can do these really neat looking thick, thick brush strokes and they look great. I think they look great. Like this one I just did here. Um, you can like make it look detailed. You can uh, put in like, I'll uh, put in coral that's light. It's up to you too. Uh, um, if you feel that it's wrong for watercolor, don't do it. You don't need to do it just because I said you do. Um, I like to do it. I, I really enjoy putting opaque now in my watercolors. And then when I go to frame them, since I'm not framing with glass anymore, I'm now um, waxing all of my paintings. Uh, it just makes it look that much more, not like an oil, but it just gives it a little bit more texture. And here I put a little bit of white with yellow. That'll give me kind of a greenish turquoise. So you can just, and this is basically, um, it's not gouache, it's just watercolor with white. So, but it is becoming uh, opaque. So in a way it is working with opaque watercolors because it's an opaque watercolor, but it's not a brand. It's not like they put the certain thing in there. I'm just using the paint thick. I did get that fine line painting pen. Haven't tried it yet. Was worried the white paint would be go up here because there's the heart in front of there that I put in there. <laughs> Darn it, the heart's blocking there. Oh, that would be weak and not show through. No, it's, you definitely got to make it very thin when you're doing this. You got to make it very thin. Um, but yeah, it, it's fine. It'll work, it'll work great. You'll love it. I, I guarantee you're going to love it. I fell in love with that pen. It's just like the best way of making a line now. And just work with it a little bit. You'll find the perfect amount of water to, to um, pigment ratio. If it gets clogged, it has a little it has a little pin right in the handle if you get the bigger one. And you just put it right in there and it comes right out again. It won't come out if it's too thick anyways. If it's too thick to paint, it will not come out. So it has to be pretty wet. Let's get some more light in here. What time we have here? We got plenty of time yet. See this nice little little light light dots here and stuff? Isn't that great? I love that. Now, yes, it would look just as good if I did it wet in the wet and um, let things float. That's kind of good too. But I like all different ways, you know, just experiment. Like I said before, just have fun, try different things. Now I could never enter this in a TWSA because they don't allow opaque whites. And so definitely wouldn't um, submit this. But don't, just try different things. Don't be, there's no really rules when it comes to um, watercolor stuff. Just do your own thing. Have fun and make it look, it all depends on what the ending is. That's what we, all we want. Some really nice ending paintings. And actually what I did also in my painting before is I put bubbles. I put little bubbles like, cause you know, a lot of times there's bubbles here. So I'm just gonna put little bubbles of the Look at that, isn't that cool, little bubble? <laughs> All right, now I'm getting nuts so crazy here. Make it bigger as I go up, right? Little bubbles coming up out of the water. Should we have that for the, for the, um, the little turtle too? Can he have bubbles? Nah, that's okay. All right, I think we're actually done early, guys. <laughs> Nothing more I can think about here, uh, unless you see something. I think that's maybe a little bit more of the blue here. Put some fish over here, some blue fish. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, right? <laughs> Let's put some dark little little patches of fish over here. All right, we can get done early, that's fine. 
Let's let me take the tape off and show the difference. And I think I got a little bit nicer, a little bit darker. And this is like, you know, um, you want to make it more exactly like the photo. That's fine. You can make it even blue. That's fine too. Like if I want to put a wash over it, let's say I want to make some parts a little bit bluer. I just take some water and then just put a little blue tint of uh, um, water over it. And it'll look blue. It'll come right back to blue. I'm going to take a little bit of peacock blue here and I just... I'll just wet it and just put it over that if I feel like I need to have it more not so vibrant you can do that no big deal but float it float it float it float it make it more like a tint of color and you can go back in front of it. and let's say you want it didn't like this whole area wipe it out and try it again it's possible you can do that you can just wipe it out and bring some more pigment into there let it float some other colors in there like I did last week where I, I scrubbed the one area out and I redid it again. It's all possible. All right. Let's see if I can take the tape off and we're good for today. Now, same thing with the tape. Um, when I did the tape for the, mas for the masking fluid, when you're pulling it off of your painting, you also want to watch out that you pull away from the, from the paper. And I can't get it started here. Come on. You want to pull away so i started right here don't pull up don't pull like this up or into the painting pull away just take it sideways like this and pull it away like totally like if you look at it from the top here i'm just pulling away pull it away from the paper because it'll if it does rip it'll pull it away from the tape paper and it won't rip into the into the scene which is the worst thing that could happen because i hate to get all the way done and then you rip right through the middle of the painting so don't do that. Just rip away. Rip to the side. Absorbent ground. We can get rid of that. See, I'm just ripping away. I do want to get started going and start talking to you guys about working on panels that are to the size of frames. I really, I have to start doing it myself to get you guys to do it. I'm going to do like this big whole day where I'm going to take and start gluing my paper down to boards so that all my boards will be easily um, waxed and put into frames without any glass and then just have them because right now I because I have a white edge here I don't have to mat it now and unless I and this is not a general size it's not a standard size so I'd have to get um, custom sizing done for that well there you go there's the scene for today and here's the one from this afternoon a little bit too light um, not as much details not as much as of the light and dark pattern because if that was darker, it would be better to have the pattern. And also, the guy is not as finished and he's a little bit simpler, a little bit more complicated. All right. All righty, guys. And see if there's any more class questions. All right. You got the fine line painting pen, too. All right. I'm glad everybody did that. And again, if you want to look for some of those objects and stuff, go to my website. It's all there now. And you can just um, look away. Any suggestions on frames? Um, I'm gonna look into that too, because once I start telling you guys to start doing it, I'm gonna give you guys areas and places to buy those frames. Cause I do wanna, um, you, know, you can't buy a watercolor frame if you're putting them in like a plain air frame. The plain air frames, you'd have to do that with the, with the um, boards and stuff, but we'll be talking about that in the future. All right.